Just a short while back, I put out this video about Linux kernel panic messages basically being completely broken and not actually showing when you want to see them. Now, the TLDR of that video is when you're in a GUI, which for the most part is how most of you are going to be using Linux. Yes, I know there are some of you weird ones who do everything in the TTY, and yes, there is Linux on the server, but we're not talking about that. We are talking about desktop Linux usage. And for the most part, you're going to be in some sort of graphical environment, whether it's GNOME, KDE, I don't know, Hyperland, i3, Sway, Cosmic, when that comes out, XSC, or basically anything else. If a Linux kernel panic happens, which is likely going to be when it happens, because that is when you're spending most of your time you're going to notice a problem. You're not going to see a log. You're not going to see any panic message. You're going to see nothing. When a panic happens, the last thing you see is the last frame that was rendered, and then everything just stops. Then you do a power cycle, and you realize that you never actually saw a kernel panic message, and most people in Linux are aware of Linux kernel panics, are aware that you're supposed to see some sort of log. They've maybe seen one in a TTY context, they've seen pictures, they've heard discussion, but had absolutely no idea that in most contexts are just never going to work. And I think after that video came out and after a bunch of other discussions, more people are aware of the issue that exists with kernel panic messages and there is less pushback against trying to implement a new solution to fix it. Now, luckily, the upstream kernel developers have been aware for a very long time that there is an issue with kernel panic messages. They know they don't work because they are the kernel developers. They are in the context where they're likely going to be the ones who actually want to see what is happening there. Now, a big reason why things have been broken is for a long time now, we've been moving away from kernel level virtual terminals, but I'm not gonna rehash everything I said in that video. Go watch that full video for full context. Just know for this video that this has been a 10 plus year work in progress to create a system known as DRM Panic. How DRM Panic works on the back end, how you make sure it actually functions if there's a kernel panic and all of that complex detail, not super important for this video. What is important is when we talk about DRM Panic, it's effectively the Linux equivalent of a Windows BSOD, a blue screen of death. Now, when we are talking about a BSOD or an error screen or whatever term you want to use, there's actually a Wikipedia page called Screens of Death that goes through a bunch of different platforms and how they show error screens. But again, not important. When we're talking about this system, what is the most important aspect to discuss? Is it ensuring that it shows under every situation that a kernel panic is going to happen? Is it the information being shown? Maybe some shorthand error message that the user can go and do something about versus a long form log that you might want to share with the developer. Is it the layout of the information to make sure that yes, you have the information there, but it's actually understandable and approachable and someone knows what they can go and do with it. Is it even something as simple as customizability for users and distros? So if a distro like Ubuntu wanted to make it orange to go with their orange branding, they could go and do so. No. The absolute most important aspect of a BSOD that needs to be bike shedded is the color of the error screen. Just last week, Have Martinez posted this image on Mastodon, a blue screen of death on the Beagle Playboard using the new DRM Panic infrastructure contributed by my awesome colleague, Jocelyn Falemp. I am really bad with names, as always, I apologize. So this is what it looks like. Now, keep in mind, this is very early stuff. This is just basically a proof of concept to demonstrate that it is functioning. There's gonna be more to this when it is ready. So here we have a little tux in the corner, an exclamation mark, and in the center, I don't know if you can read that, it says, Kernel Panic, please reboot your computer. Now, Obviously, that's not useful information. You know that you need to reboot your computer because your screen is currently blue. 
Again, there will be more later on down the line. In case you don't know like I didn't, the Beagle Playboard is this nice little single board computer, think something like a Raspberry Pi, but not important. Now considering it's been talked about on Pharonix before, it should be absolutely no surprise that this post also got an article as well. And if you like the Pharonix standard, it's what you would expect from Pharonix. You get an explanation of what happened here, the backstory, why this is being worked on, how you would test it on your system, an example of using it, a quote about the thing, and you know, generally, Pharonix being Pharonix. I like Pharonix, I know a lot of people don't, but I do think it is a fairly good, at least, initial source to go and do further research from. Whilst I like Pharonix, and I like the work that Michael Larabelle does, the comments on Pharonix are always just... They are something else. And would you be surprised if I told you the thing they are focusing on is not DRM panic, is not kernel panic messages, actually becoming a thing that works. No, it's the color being used in the demo. Why does it have to be blue? Don't copy Windows. I'd prefer black with white text. I agree, the bright blue color is harsh and unpleasant. I'd personally prefer it to be dark red or amber. Much nicer, less stress-inducing colors. Your system just crashed. This should be a stress-inducing situation. This one I think is a joke, but I do still like it. Red colour would be more suitable for representing a panic with a penguin skull. That's why I think this one's a joke. No, don't go with Windows Blue, please. And there is eight pages. Some of the comments are reasonable. Some of people are like, ah, oh, well, maybe it's tunable by the distro and things like that. But how is there eight pages of comments of people just arguing about what the color should be. Now the best part about this, right, is most people don't even realize the color is configurable. It doesn't have to be blue. In fact, it doesn't even default to being blue. It defaults to a black screen. It was set to blue for the sake of making the screenshot because it's the Linux beast sod, you know, Blue is part of the name of Beastsod, so here you go, funny blue screen. Now I've said this in prior videos, but a lot of people misunderstand the purpose of the Beastsod, and they blame the Beastsod as being some terrible thing with Windows. The Beastsod is the messenger. There's nothing Beastsod is doing wrong. The Beastsod is there because the other stuff is the problem, and the other stuff is crashing, causing the B-Sod to happen. The B-Sod is just an error screen. If the rest of the stack was stable, and the rest of the stack didn't crash, you would never see the B-Sod. But a lot of people find it very easy to attack the thing that they see when something goes wrong, rather than the thing actually causing the thing to happen that it's telling you is going wrong. Also, prior to Windows having B-Sods, prior to that, there were cases where you could just say, well, my system crashed, I don't really care, right? I'm just gonna keep trying to use it and see what happens. The B-Sod is there to make sure that if your system is in a basically unrecoverable state, you have to restart it because you might corrupt some data if you keep trying to use it and... I get why people blame the B-Sod for being this terrible thing, but is not the thing causing the problem. Now, once that Pharonix post came out, uh, there were some comments under this sort of pointing out the dumb comments being made on the Pharonix forums. Judging from the fantastic comments on Pharonix, the big issue is the choice of color. I wonder how blue screen of death can have any other color. Indeed. Indeed, indeed. Now, in response to this incredibly productive discussion coming out of the Phronix forums, Haver made another post. <laughs> it seems that a blue Linux DRM panic triggered some people, so here is a black screen of death on an SSD 1306 display. Kernel panic, please reboot, yo because there's not enough space to show all of the text there. As I said, the color 
is configurable. In fact, this is how it's supposed to look by default, obviously on a display that is not this small where it's cutting off a bit of the text, but this is the color being used because why would you render a different color by default? Everything else that happens on Linux in the TTY has a black screen anyway, so it's obviously gonna be a black screen by default. Now, in response to this post being made, Pharonix also made a follow-up post as well. Linux can have a black screen of death for kernel panics, which again mentions the previous post, hey, there was a blue screen of death before. Given complaints about it being too like Microsoft Windows following his recent Linux blue screen of death showcase with the new DRAM panic code in Linux 6.10 and supported by select direct rendering manager display drivers, Haver showed a black screen of death is possible if so desired because that's actually the default. And the reason it was blue before is because it was a beast sod joke. It was a joke about blue screen of deaths. That's the reason it was configured to be blue. There you have it. For those that may have otherwise experienced bad memories of Windows BSODs. Again, I don't understand why you have bad memories of them. You need to understand that a BSOD is a good thing. You want a BSOD. You don't want your system to just randomly power down if something goes wrong. And the forum comments, because they're the Pharonix forum comments, again, are just focused. This time focused on why having a BSOD, this person doesn't actually realize that we don't have working kernel panics anyway. You don't like Linux's verbosity because you've never actually seen it. You think you've seen it, but you actually haven't. And again, more people focusing on the color because <laughs> why why it's just a error screen you're probably never gonna see it anyway the thing that matters with the error screen is does it have the information you care about for the error screen the color of the information doesn't matter. As long as the color, you can actually tell what is being said on the screen. Like, you don't have red text on a red background. It doesn't matter what the screen actually looks like. You could have a yellow background, a red background, a green background, and you know what? It especially doesn't matter because you're probably never actually going to see a kernel panic anyway. And if you do see one, you're probably not going to do anything with it because... Unless you're running intentionally buggy kernel modules because maybe there just isn't a better option or maybe you're a developer that is trying to work on a kernel module, Linux is relatively stable. You'll maybe see a crash once every year maybe, once every couple of years. And are you going to do anything about it? No, probably not. You're probably not going to go and make a bug report about some random kernel panic you had. You might, maybe, if it's a frequent kernel panic. But if it's this one-off thing that you have no idea how to replicate, I guarantee you're just going to reboot your system and be like, huh, that was weird. Well, I'm going to go on with my day now. But... For the people who actually do something with the logs, you know, the kernel developers or just people who are frequently reporting bugs to the kernel, it is very nice to have a system in place where it's actually going to work and you are actually going to see a log when the kernel panics. Hopefully it doesn't panic though. But what do you think? Do you think the color of your error screen actually matters? Are you going to argue in a comment section about how blue is such a terrible color and should never ever be used? Because you know I'm expecting it, and now that I've said it, I know it's gonna happen, so have some fun with that, I guess. Now, if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one over these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon Scribe Sleeper Pay linked in the description down below. That's gonna be it for me, and. Here's a good way to break things.